Howard, how have you preserved the past with paper? Um, in general, what we have done with paper is uh, make, it, make the paper itself last a very long time. Paper is fairly stable. We have paper from 2,000 years ago. Um, uh, paper lasts a long time. Um, the things that we have on paper are, are very important to our history. If we want to uh, understand uh, uh, someone like uh, Cabral and his exploration, we have pa on paper, we have his diaries, we have letters he wrote, we have maps, we have uh, uh, cartas. Um, uh, if we want to understand more recent uh, memory, uh, 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 Mario uh, Mendez, we have all of his material on paper. Paper lasts uh, a long time if we do nothing to it. And how is the difference with digital? Digital does not last a long time. Digital lasts a very short time. Uh, anyone who has, who worked with a word processor 15 years ago, cannot read their word processing files. Even if they still have Microsoft Word, uh, they still can't read that. So with, um, with, our, uh, with digital, it's a very different process. We don't make the file last a long time. Think of your cellular, your, your telephone. You ta I take a photo of you with, with, uh, with my cellular. Um, when I get uh, the photo, the photo is inside the camera. Do I want to save that camera for 200 years to save your photo? Uh, I don't need the original. I make a copy. I take a copy out of my cellular phone and I put it on my computer. Or I, I, I'm, I'm always copying and I can make an exact copy. So for digital material, we copy for paper material, we try to preserve the original. That's the big difference. Explain us the difference between preservation and conservation. Conservation is usually trying to make the original material last for a long time. So we have in museums, in art museums, we have um, uh, uh, our paintings are, are handled by conservators. They try to make the painting last for a very long time, make it survive. For preservation, uh, preservation means managing a process of making something survive. So in the digital world, when we have a digital work, uh, we have to make a copy of it every five years or every 10 years, uh, make a copy because the support that it sits on will not last for very long. We also need to change that file a little bit because the software that uses it does not last very long. So, for example, with a, a Microsoft Word file from, from 1995, that was probably in Word for Windows 95. We cannot read that file today. So we would, in the year 2000, we'd uh, transfer it to Word for Windows 2000. In 2005, we'd, we'd transfer it to Word for Windows 2005. So preservation, digital preservation, means managing this process, keeping records, of moving it from one support to another, of changing the, uh, the software that, uh, that, that the, the format that the software needs to read 
every five years or every 10 years, managing that process for 100 years, 200 years, 500 years. So that's preservation as opposed to conservation. Okay, and conservation has more, uh, is more related with the, uh, the digital, the data, uh, or with the material? Conservation the is hardware. related to the material object. Okay. Conservation says, I want to keep this object the way it was originally. Uh, uh, preservation, uh, particularly digital preservation, is concerned with the information in the object. So we could digitally preserve this book by taking a digital photograph of every page. That would not be conservation because it is not the original object. It is, uh, it is a copy of the original object. But if the original is digital, like a word processing file, a web page, a digital photograph, then there is no original object and the copy is an exact copy of the first copy. Okay. Tell us more about personal correspondence for a preservation specialist point of view. Okay. Um, in, throughout history, we understand uh, uh, history and we understand culture and we understand literature by the correspondence that people had with each other by personal kinds of things. So an author writes a letter to another author commenting upon their poem or their uh, uh, novel and the original author changes the novel a little bit. We save all of that personal correspondence to understand history. Uh, a politician, you know, today, Jilma, writes a letter to the, um, uh, the president of the Supreme Court. They correspond back and forth. That's very important to, to understand the politics of today. But today, those letters are not on paper. They're emails. And so today, we need to find ways to preserve these personal information, the letters, the correspondence, the drafts of, uh, of a document, the first draft, second draft, third draft of a document. We need to find ways to save this uh, the, uh, for history and for culture, because we've always done that with things that are on paper. Uh, so, on your opinion, those are the challenges for a preservation, a digital preservation? Yes, for digital preservation, we need to find good ways to save these things. And we've already done a lot of work on this. I'll be speaking tomorrow about some work we've done on saving personal correspondence. But there are, there are big questions. Who will save these things? Your email or Dilma's email may be on a server um, somewhere that it's, or it may be on her own personal computer, her own hard disk. Where does that go? Does that go to an archive? It may be on Gmail or in the cloud. Uh, Google with Gmail does not, when you die, does not allow someone else to, to enter your password even if you give someone your password, it is illegal. Google makes it illegal for someone else to, to look at your email after you die. So how do, we, uh, uh, how do we save these things? There are big questions of, uh, that involve politics, laws. And um, digital legislation about that. Digital legislation, yes. Very, very much, as well as the practical, how do we save these so that we can find the email. Okay. Why is it important to discuss preservation and conservation inside the universities? Mm. Um, it's, it's important to discuss these things in the university for many different reasons. Um, uh, I'll, I'll break these into different categories. Uh, one reason is that they involve research, teaching, things that universities always do. 
Um, we need to do, as I said earlier, we need to do more research on how uh, can we preserve these things. And that research is in technical questions, but it's also in legal questions. So those are the things that happen in a university. Um, a second category is that universities preserve our history in their archives and that universities have always known how to collect uh, uh, when famous people die, how to collect their works and then how to preserve them and how to make them uh, accessible to researchers in the future. Um, uh, these things are now in digital form. Uh, our university archives don't necessarily know how to take in the hard disk of a famous person when they die. They don't know how to get their Gmail off of the server when they die because that's illegal. There are many different questions. The last area for universities is the university's own history. That a university has always saved its own history for uh, legal reasons, for historical reasons. Uh, uh, if uh, I teach at a university, if someone took a class from me 15 years ago, I need, and they need to, they come back, they go to another school, uh, that school wants to see if they have credit for the class 15 years ago, I have to save the syllabus from my class. All of our syllabus, syllabuses, all of our syllabi are now in digital form. Is someone saving this? Are our procedures in the university for saving our own university records, our own university information? Those procedures were made for the world of paper. We need to change those procedures to the world of digital so that we can save these, these things. So one thing I'll be showing uh, tomorrow is the web pages for uh, the Federal University of Juiz de Fora. Um, the web pages have changed. Uh, in, in 15 years, I have f uh, copies of 15 different web pages that look very different from each other. Those were not saved by the university. Those were saved by a guy in San Francisco, California, who saves web pages. The university needs to change its procedure to save these things itself. Is that already changed in the United States no. or at your own department? No, it's not, it's not very good anywhere. Uh, it, we're starting to do these things in the United States. We do do this in my department just in my department, but not in my university. Um, these things are, are changing. They're changing very quickly now in the United States. The last two years, there have been some major changes. How the preservation can contribute with uh, history, sociology, how, those, uh, how kind of analysis uh, it could help? Um, did, uh, we need to preserve material that is important, but we also need, what we know from history is that many things that did not seem important when they happened later become very important. And so we need to save some of those things. So another thing that I'll be showing in my talk tomorrow is all of the, the vinegar uh, rebellion, or I, I don't know what you call uh, it. Uh, are you talking about the movement Passo Livre? Yeah, Passo Livre, Passo Livre, and what has come from Passo Livre. Um, the history of that, we need to save that. That, does, that may not seem very important right now, but 10 years, 20 years, 50 years from now, that will be very important. There are many things like this that are mainly digital. If you look at Passe Livre and you look at the demonstrations now throughout Brazil, millions of people in the streets, the documents that people discovered uh, uh, that they want to go into the street, those, all of those documents are on Facebook, Twitter, 
um, uh, web pages. Those are all digital. Those are all totally digital. Who is saving those? Someone needs to save these. Okay. Today, how is your collaboration with Brazil? Um, I work a lot with uh, Arquivo Nacional uh, in Rio de Janeiro. Uh, my wife uh, works for IFAN. She's a conservator for, uh, for IFAN. Um, um, many of my, my works have been uh, translated, works that I have written alone, and works that I have, uh, of committees and groups that I'm on, uh, have been translated by Arquivo Nacional into Portuguese. Uh, and then I keep on my website uh, most of my papers, all of my talks, every one of the slides that I show in all of my talks are online and available to anyone to look at, um, though most of those are in English, not in Portuguese. What are your principal interests as a preservation specialist? Uh, I'm very interested in, um, uh, in uh, uh, Twitter, Facebook, web pages, personal information. Those, those areas interest me a lot. Uh, Audiovisual interests me a lot. I'm director of a, a, a program uh, uh, training people for master's degrees in audiovisual preservation. So YouTube and other types of audiovisual preservation, oral histories, videos like this video, who's, who's preserving this? Um, uh, questions like that, those are, all of those things interest me a lot and I work with them a lot today. So we can have access to your, uh, your production, your articles at your website? On my website, all of my talks and many of my articles. In the United States, you are considered a pioneer of digital preservation and also known as Dr. T-shirt. Can you explain it, why this nickname? Uh, yes, it's because I have a collection of uh, 2,800 T-shirts. Which kind of T-shirts? Uh, the T-shirts are many different kinds. Um, uh, this is uh, uh, Los uh, Arcos, uh, La Rio, Lapa, uh, uh, Lapa uh, Rio de Janeiro. Um, uh, but uh, mainly I collect in the areas of radical politics and of uh, avant-garde art uh, and of media, media, conservation, uh, things like that as well. Those are my main areas that I collect. But um, the Library of Congress uh, named me as one of their pioneers of digital preservation. But uh, in their interview, they mainly wanted to know about my t-shirts <laughs> because um, I have a, um, uh, I digitized the first 550 of my t-shirts, cataloged them with 35 fields of metadata I didn't do this all myself. My students mm -hmm. helped me do this in 1995. So I have on the web a database of my t-shirts that has been there since 1995. The web has changed a lot since 1995. And my t-shirt database is a case study in digital preservation. Because every two years, I have to make changes to the database so that it survives. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you.